in this video, we're going to look into forecasting and we will be discussing moving average model. So what is a moving average model? Let's look into an example over here. Yeah, what do you mean by a moving average model? Now, before we do a forecasting yeah, using moving average model, first we need to know what do you mean by the notation K over here. K refers to how many observations we are using for prediction. So let's say in our case here, we want to predict sales for week three. So you can see over here, I'm using the observation from week one and observation from week two to forecast the sales of week three. So how did I get the value 25.5 here? It's observation one, 25 plus observation two, 26, I divide by two, yeah, which is 25.5. So I have calculated the average of the prior two observation. And that's how I got the 27 here. Yeah, it's the average of the prior two observation, which is 26 plus 28 divided by 2. And this will follow until my final prediction. So you can see this 29.5 is predicted from the prior two observation, 30 plus 29 divided by 2. So now based on moving average model, I am forecasting that the sales for week 6 will be 29.5. So this is moving average model. In this case here, I've used k equal to 2. I can even use k equal to 3. Let's look into the example here. So over here, I've used k equal to 3, where I have forecasted the sales for week 4, 26.3. How did I get the 26.3? I've add up 25, 26, 28, divide by 3. So that's how I got 26.3. Yeah, And the same as how I got 28 and prolonged to 29. I'm always using the prior three observations. So if the value of k is going to change, yeah, in this case here is k2 and here is k3. You can even use k4 and so forth depending on your number of observations. The value that is forecasted is going to be different. When k was equal to 2, the forecast value for week 6 is 29.5. And when the k is equal to 3, the forecast value is 29. So which should I pick to forecast for week number 6? The sales should be or forecasted to be 29.5 or 29. Now, in order for us to decide which precise forecast value to pick, what we have to do is we have to look into the residual. So when we do a forecast, the blue line here, it's the actual value. Yeah, you have your data points and I have the values here. And the orange line here is the forecast value. So technically, if the distance between these two lines is getting smaller, it indicates that the forecast is much more better. Yeah, that's the residual, the difference between the actual and the forecast. So we have to pick the K that will have the smallest yeah, amount of residual over here. Yeah, so that's what technically we are trying to say. So in order for us to see, yeah, which K we should pick, whether it should be K2, K3 or so forth, we have several methods that we can use. The first method is mean absolute deviation, which is MAD. The second method is mean square error, MSE. And the third method is mean absolute percentage error, MAPE. Now, what I have done here, so that you understand the formulas for all these three methods better, we will go one by one Yeah, in this table here. For absolute deviation, it's the actual value minus the forecast value. Yeah, We are taking the absolute value. For square error, 
what we do is we take the difference between the actual value and the forecast value and we square. So the transition from here to here is we are squaring the value. Next, we have absolute percentage error. Yeah, where we are taking the absolute value here, the difference between the actual value and the forecast value. We divide with the actual value and we times with 100. So it's from the absolute deviation here. We divide with the actual value times with 100. We get the absolute percentage error. Yeah. And now we move on to MAD. So what we are doing, we are taking the sum of absolute deviation. We are taking the sum of absolute deviation divided by N, which is the number of forecasts. You will get mean absolute deviation. How do we get MSE? Is the sum of the square error here. Yeah, we are taking the sum of square error. We divide by N, which is the number of forecast value. We will get mean square error, MSE. For MIP, how, how are we getting this formula here? We are taking the sum of absolute percentage error and we divide with the number of forecast value, which is N. So, I will show you later on why I have separated them like this because this will be easier for you to calculate and for you to tablet in your Excel later. So, what we are going to do now, we are going to move to Microsoft Excel, where I'm going to show you how you can do moving yeah, average model using Microsoft Excel and how you can actually conduct MAD, MSE and MAP in order for you to decide which forecast value will be the best. So let's move to Microsoft Excel now. Okay, so I'm going to use this hypothetical data, yeah, which is sales. I'm going to predict the sales for week number eight. And we are going to use a moving average model using Microsoft Excel. And I'm going to explain to you two models. One where K equals to two and the second one K equals to three. So let's do the first one first. You go to data, data analysis, you select moving average. So your input range here, you select your input range, which is here, sales unit. And your interval here will be 2. Yeah, because our K equals to 2. Your output range, select yeah, the cell below here uh, so that it will arrange your data accordingly. You click OK. Yeah, so we have already calculated the values using K2. And according to this prediction, it is forecasted that for week 8, the sales will be 29. Yeah, I'm just going to remove the unwanted values. Now, let's do the same thing using K equals to 3. You go to data, data analysis, moving average, OK. The input range is going to be the same. You need to change here K equals to 3. And your output range, again, as I mentioned earlier, use a cell below here. Yeah. And you click OK. So if you see now, we have forecasted two values for week number 8. If we use K2, it's 29. If we use K equals to 3, it's 27.7. So which value shall we use? In order to decide, we need to calculate MAD, MSE, and MAPE. We can use these three methods in order for us to make a decision. So let's calculate MAD first. So I'll put an equal sign here yeah, where I have the actual value and the predicted value. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find the absolute deviation. How do I find the absolute deviation? It's the actual value minus the forecast value. Yeah, I'm going to take the absolute value, which is AB as I'll take the actual value minus the forecast value. Yeah and click enter. So I've got 2.5. So I can drag 
right up to here yeah you cannot go till week 8 why because there is no actual value over here so can you see what i've done is that i found the absolute deviation and how do i get mad mad is the summation of the absolute deviation divided by n so technically it's the average of the absolute deviation so i can put an equal sign here and type average and select all this value here and click enter so it's 2.8 next i can calculate mse so first i can calculate the square error how do i calculate the square error put an equal sign can you see the square error here is actually the difference between the actual value and the forecast value and we square the value so i can just pick this value here and square the value click enter and track until here and again what is mse mse is again yeah the average of the square error where mse is the sum of square error divided by n yeah which n here is the number of forecast value so i type here average and i select all this value here i click enter so i got 8.9 here yeah Next, I'm going to calculate for MIP. I can calculate absolute percentage error first. Equal sign. Can you see the first part of the formula, which is the uh, absolute value of the difference between the actual and the forecast value is already calculated over here. So I just select this value. I divide with the actual value here, yeah, which is the sales 28. And I times this value with 100. And I click enter I just drag this thing down and it will automatically calculate the rest of the value so again MAPE is the summation of absolute percentage error divided by n so it's the average of this value equal average and I select the range over here and I click enter so now I've already calculated MAD, MSE, and MAPE for K2. Now what I will do, I will repeat the entire process for K3. So once you have calculated MAD, MSE, and MAPE for both K2 and K3, now you have to do a comparison which value to pick. Whether, yeah, let me just highlight whether it should be 29, or 27 yeah which will be the best forecast for week 8 so can you see if i compare mad value here here is 2.8 for k2 and for k3 is 2.9 so the mad here is much more smaller yeah that means the residual is much more smaller it's a better forecast same thing goes to comparison between mse for k2 and k3 the value here is smaller and lastly if I compare MAPE, can you see the value here for K2 is much more smaller. Yeah. Therefore, if we are comparing between K2 and K3, we can say that K2 is giving you a better forecast for week 8. So this is how you are going to make your decisions on picking your forecast value. <music>